So thank you all for coming. I'd like to welcome you all to the 10th annual, 10th annual CIO Symposium, MIT Sloan CIO Symposium, pre-event dinner. Um, this is a name that I think we should probably do a better job of marketing because it's very utilitarian, it's very MIT-ish to say, what are you going to? The MIT Sloan pre-event dinner. But anyway, that's what we do at MIT. Um, actually, I was wishing Dave Weber was supposed to be here. He was hoping he would be here because he was the one that let me out of marketing when I was at Sloan, so <laughs> it's his fault. Um, I want to start by thanking a few people. Um, very, the first people I want to thank is SAS, who is here. Um, they are our diamond sponsor, so thank you very much to our diamond sponsors. Um, I don't know where you are there. One of them. And um, so thank you very much. And of course, all of our sponsors, um, Avaya and Accenture in particular, because they are our, our platinum sponsors. I have to remember the levels. Um, but all of our sponsors, thank you so much. It's very helpful. Um, for those of you that don't know, sponsoring this event actually does help to fund all of the club's events through the year. So we have a full series, uh, a full career development series. We have continuous back to the classroom cl um, events. Um, we do um, customer or, um, public service type events. So it's very helpful that um, you help help the club this way, as well as find this event and this wonderful dinner. So thank you. Um, also, I'd like to, I've lost my place. Uh, so, oh, I know what I want to say. Um, I'd like to announce the fact that we're all very excited about the fact that the MIT Sloan Alumni Club of Boston is officially now the MIT, Boston, MIT Sloan Boston Alumni Association. That was hard. <laughs> um, so uh, we're very excited about the name change, but it also has to do with the change of strategy. So those of you that are MIT, Boston area MIT alum, you'll see some changes in our marketing and some changes in our, our programming. So we're looking forward to that. Um, as well, so I'd like to thank a few people tonight, a few specific VIPs that are here. Um, first, I'd like to announce, uh, point out a few of the board members. I've got Sean Brown. I know Jeff Euler is here somewhere. There's Jeff. Um, I saw Dave Herlick, who is the president of our board, as well as Lindy Anderson and Christopher Reichert. And I believe that's all the board members that are here tonight. Uh, we do have a few more board members, but um, those are the ones that I've seen so far. Thank you all. Uh, there's also a few other people I'd like to point out, and one I know for a fact is here. I'm not sure if both of them made it, is uh, Stephen Buckley and Jeff Loeb was also, he, they're the founders of this event. Um, ten years ago, it was their brainchild. Um, in addition to those two, I'd like to point out some our past chairs. We have Gopi Bala. I think Gopi's here. I'm not sure. I haven't seen him. Um, Gopi didn't make it. I'm sorry. Uh, Mac Johnson and Graham Rong are also both here, and they are past organizers. There's Mike. There's Graham. Thank you both for all your work. Um, I'd also like to just recognize the full organizing team, but I'm going to start off with quickly going through. Um, specifically like to call out um, Christopher Reichert and Lindsay Anderson, as well as myself, yeah. um, for being the advisory team that we're really helping to guide it. Um, Kathleen um, Tetro is one of, is also the, she's the executive chair, and she unfortunately was not able to make it tonight, but she should be here tomorrow. Um, in addition to, the, to us, uh, there's Sudar, and, Sudar Desai and George Westerman, who organized the award. Um, David Verrill and Anton Teodescu, Te Anton, whose name I always get wrong, um, who organized the Innovation Showcase, the brilliant thing, it works very well. Um, I don't know where either of them are, but they're here. Uh, Bernard Crespi, who, thank you very much, Bernard. I don't see you, but thank you. You're, he leads all of our marketing. He is wonderful. Um, <laughs> Basim Nassim, who does our partnerships, so he brings in all of the former groups. Basim was particularly good this year about helping to bring in international attendees. We have a large group of people coming from around the world, which is always exciting for us. We love that. Um, other organizers, Niha Singh, who managed our program, our printed program. So when you look and see this, the um, beautiful artwork and stuff, and that your name matches your bio. That's 
that's nice. <laughs> Niha, so thank you. Um, we also have Sampada, um, Sampada Tawari, who is excellent. She organized all of our speakers, and I'm almost done. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'm very close to being done here. Sampada is great. She did, she did all the panels and speakers. Um, Kunal Kishore and Dennis Ringland, who do sponsorship, so anybody that's here that's a sponsor has gotten emails from those two. Thank you very much. And finally, Ray Chang, thank you for all your hard work on keeping the website up to date and current. Thank you all. All right. So just quickly, um, over the last 10 years, this event has really grown significantly. The day's gotten longer. We've added more features. Um, some things, we've, we try to innovate, some things work, some things don't, we keep some things, we retire some things. Um, this year, when, one of the things that we're trying that's a little bit different is we have brought the award ceremony to tonight's dinner, um, excuse me, rather than as part of the day of the event. We're hoping that this will help to tighten up the day of the event and um, make it go wonderfully, but um, we'll see. <laughs> In any case, uh, George is gonna, has the honor of doing this year's award, so George Westerman, you get to take over from here. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Again, thank you all for coming. Thanks, Joanna. Thank you. So, Joanna, uh, sorry. Joanna mentioned this is an innovation, trying to bring the CIO awards here, but I, thought, I think it makes a lot of sense because it's a smaller community, uh, it's a chance for the organizers and the CIOs and the past winners to, to kind of be together and, uh, and get to know each other. And that, that's a fantastic opportunity. And then, of course, tomorrow, uh, both the finalists, the award winner, will all be there for the press and for panels and some other things, which will also be very helpful. So um, I want to tell you about the award and then announce the, the, the finalists and the winners. So the MIT Sloan CIO Leadership Award is now in its sixth year. Uh, Mike Johnson over there was one of the people that founded the award um, a long time ago. Um, and um, it's for CIOs who lead their organizations to deliver business value and innovation in exceptional ways. And the committee this year was really focusing on that idea. What, if, what does it mean to be an exceptional CIO? There are a lot of good CIOs out there. What does it mean to be truly exceptional? Uh, we evaluated the applicants in a three-phase process. Two different rounds of judges looked at applications that came in for the award, and in the third round of judge interviewed each of the four finalists uh, to, to, find this, to find our winner. Um, the award judges were a mix of CIOs, industry thought leaders, and MIT folks. And so many of you are here. Can you just uh, kind of raise your hand if you were on the judging panel? Greg, Mike, Naeem, Graham. So I want to thank you all for, for your hard work. That, that you're what made this thing happen. I also want to thank the awards committee. Um, you know, when, when somebody asks you to run a committee, the first thing you think is, oh my, what am I going to do, right? Uh, Sadir signed up. Where's Sadir? Signed up to be the co-chair, and it was fantastic that we were able to work this thing together. And then our, two, our three other members of the co committee, Ray Chang, Mike Johnson, and Kathleen, who's not here, uh, did more than just be on the committee. They did a ton, a ton of work. And uh, this couldn't have happened without you. So I want to thank all of you. If you could just kind of raise your hands. Mike, Sadir, Ray, where are you? Great. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> it's a very busy year. We actually changed the process in a big way. We changed the criteria. We changed the judging process. Um, and um, you know, through the judges and the committee, that's how we made this thing happen. So now, the big moment for our award finalists. Let me announce each of you. We had some truly amazing CIOs that applied. Uh, I, I was really impressed. But four people really stood out uh, from the rest. Uh, they do a lot more than just lead their IT units. Uh, they actually really work to power their companies forward with IT. And you'll, and you'll see when I talk about what these, company, these four people are doing, it's a really good group of people. Uh, as we think about the theme of the symposium, they really exemplify it. Now, the theme is the transformational CIO, architecting the enterprise of the future, and all four of these people seem like they fit that theme just perfectly. So I'll read your names in alphabetical order. If you could, when I call your name, if you could stand up, I'll say a little bit about you, and then you, know, you can get the recognition you deserve. Okay? So in alphabetical order, uh, first up, Scott Blanchett from Vanguard Health Systems. <laughs> Hmm. 
Scott's a senior vice president and CIO for Vanguard Health. As CIO, he's responsible for technology strategy and execution across Vanguard's many, and I mean many, hospitals, clinics, health plans, lab companies, and other kinds of business ventures. He's also founder and president of Hangar 9 Solutions, which is a Vanguard company that provides IT services to other health providers around the country. Uh, Scott and his team are actively involved in changing the way Vanguard does business, uh, from transforming radiology uh, to launching new businesses like Hangar 9, and to using analytics to improve diagnostics and health outcomes. So thank you, Scott, for applying, and congratulations on being a finalist. <laughs> Next up, Cynthia Neustadt. Great. <laughs> Cynthia has been Senior Vice President and CIO at Health Management Systems, Inc. since 2011. Uh, HMS is a company I had never heard of, but it's a really interesting business. They specialize in cost containment for government and commercial healthcare programs. So you imagine in today's regulatory and healthcare environment, that's a fast growing business and IT is really powering it forward. Uh, Cynthia has completely transformed the role of the IT organization and now she's working on building the analytics company because this is a data company. Um, She's also found a really creative way to communicate the technology strategy. She uses these really cool like cartoon-like graphic illustrations to kind of show whether you're a business person or an IT person, where do you fit in the story? So thank you, Cynthia. Right. <laughs> Next up, Michael Relic. Mike? Great. Mike is Executive VP, Chief Information Officer, and Head of Strategic Planning for Guess Incorporated. So, uh, you know, you, you can see a lot of these people add extra titles. That just seems to be the new, the new CIO trend, <laughs> right? Um, he has strong experience as an operational retail executive, both at Guess and at former retail companies. Uh, at Guess, he's helped transform the buying and manufacturing processes. Uh, they've developed a really innovative iPad business intelligence system. Uh, it not only works really well, it's absolutely beautiful. And I, it, when you're in fashion, that's probably a really good thing. <laughs> uh, in addition, I just learned Mike speaks Mandarin. And so when you're managing a global supply chain, uh, that's, that's a good thing. So uh, thank you, Mike. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Kim Stevenson. Kim? Great, great. Uh, Kim is Corporate Vice President and CIO of Intel Corporation. She and her 6,000 person IT department <laughs> deliver technology solutions and services to enable Intel's growth and efficiency strategies. She and her staff have changed the way IT services are provisioned. So if they've got 6,000 IT people, just think about how many people they have in general and provisioning IT, it's a big challenge, right? Um, they do self-service, which is a good thing. They've also really taken a marketing approach. So you're not just an IT user, you're one of different marketing archetypes and they treat you differently because of that. Uh, she's also reached out to the business units and they found innovative ways to help business units improve their processes from product testing to improving time to market to ch improving the way that they target their sales processes. So uh, thank you, thank you Kim for being part of it. After dinner, just so people don't need to come up right now, we'll have these really kind of cool, um, you know, these things, right? So the, the awards for all of the finalists, and, and uh, we want to, you know, that's something you can hang on your wall, and uh, just point to everybody and say, hey, look what I got, right? <laughs> I am really, truly pleased to recognize the achievements of these uh, finalists. Um, each one is going to be on a panel tomorrow. Each one's gonna be around for media. Each one's gonna be around to talk to people. Uh, and I just, I was so delighted to be able to look at these people and say these people were the finalists. The, truly, if you think about who MIT should recognize as finalists in a, in a contest, it, it's people like this. Uh, you know, you're doing amazing stuff and you should really be, be really proud to be among a very small number of people that we've had as finalists over the six years of this program. Um, but now, I have the honor to announce the winner. The judging panel interviewed each of the finalists um, in an hour-long phone call. We assessed people according to the award criteria, including of, um, 
truly exceptional ways. And it was a, just a ridiculously, ridiculously hard decision. Um, but we fought through it. We came up with it. We were able to choose the one person that we thought was the winner. And so I'm proud to announce who that is. So drum roll, please. The winner of the 2013 <laughs> MIT Sloan CIO Leadership Award is Scott Blanchett from Vanguard Health Systems. Congratulations, Scott. But you could probably use it to cut diamonds or something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, congratulations. So, you want to say something? Um, I'll keep it very brief because I know everybody's hungry. It's late on the East Coast, Tennessee. It's still, still work time, especially if you work for me. Um, <laughs> You know what, I, and uh, I apologize for reading. When I was a kid, I grew up, uh, and my next door neighbor was Colin Powell when he was Major Powell, not the celebrity he is today, but he, he to told me two things I'll never forget. One was uh, perpetual optimism as a force multiplier, and I, I completely believe that, remember that to this day. The second was if you're going to say anything important, always write it down. So uh, I just wanted to thank the Sloan MIT uh, CIO Symposium. Um, for their, their time and attentions and efforts and, and uh, grilling me uh, better than any master's uh, level uh, defense uh, dissertation thesis uh, that I, I could go through. It was uh, certainly uh, not easy and uh, I appreciate for them, you know, for them listening to uh, my overly emotive description of Vanguard's transformation. I also wanted to offer my congratulations to the other uh, finalists, Cynthia Neustad, uh, Michael Rellett, and uh, Kim Stevenson. Um, so congratulations to all of you. And, um, and in, in Kim's place, I haven't told you, I actually steal your annual report as a format and I reuse it. So <laughs> I don't know if there's an IP infringement issue here or not, but we should probably, um, but your, all of your leadership and, and uh, vision has been exceptional and it makes the competition even, even that much more um, important. I just wanted to offer a few comments on innovation, in particular innovation in healthcare. Um, you know, as an industry sector, we're an interesting paradox. We're the largest vertical industry in the United States. We're approaching 20% of the GDP. Uh, we employ one in six Americans today, and we'll touch everyone at some point in your life, whether it's uh, parents, spouses, or children. Yet, the other day, I read a study that ranked our technical acumen and and healthcare of 17 rated industries was last, below state and local government. <laughs> and when our, when our clinicians quip, we don't want to uh, offer our patients an experience like the DMV, I think that might be aspirational someday. <laughs> so, um, you know, I found the study to be both offensive personally, but also inspirational professionally. And, and unfortunately, the underlying data points they used were, were all too true. And I think, you know, for that reason, I offer this group a challenge. And this is a challenge to not only the Sloan Symposium, but to MIT, who, by the way, having been, you know, an Army guy, I went to school at public schools next to military posts. I'm always uh, just enamored by the, the, the consolidation of, of intellectual property and, and thought and research and, uh, and teachings that go on here. And if anybody ever wants to hire a, a particularly um, motivated undergraduate research uh, person, I'd be more than happy to come and do some really interesting things <laughs> in the healthcare space. But I, here's my challenge, which is bring your ideas, your innovations, and your inspiration, and maybe your perspiration to healthcare. Because no industry, especially healthcare, is going to be forced to change faster, further, and with a more comprehensive impact on healthcare over the next five to 10 years. And you'll find a few of us very doggedly pursuing those sorts of transformations and innovations. Um, at Vanguard, we have some very simple notions um, that we're going to continue to pursue over the next couple of years. It's not too much to expect that your doctor knows as much about you as your local grocer or your local car dealer. But unfortunately, today, that isn't the case. It's not unrealistic to expect that your interaction with the healthcare system 
doesn't end when you leave the door of our clinics or our hospitals. And it shouldn't be aspirational for us to expect more from your healthcare computing experience than you get from your local DMV. If the banks in 2008 were too big to fail, then healthcare in 2013 is too important to fail. But that transformation is only be driven by innovations, bright minds, a lot of dedication, and folks like you. Before I go, just one last word of appreciation tonight to my wife who couldn't be here. Uh, she's coaching our son's little league team, so go Nashville. Um, but over the course of 20 years together, she's been my inspiration, and much of what I do I've done, and I owe to her. So thank you, Sloan CIO Symposium, very much.